Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is How to Make a Game in Unity and welcome to episode 38. So this time we're going to look at creating a cutscene and a minimap. So first things first, well, let's look at the minimap because the cutscene takes a little bit of jigging around to get it looking just right. So to create a minimap we're going to use something called a render texture. So if we go to our textures folder down here, right click, create and then click on a render texture Let's call this mini map. And the great thing about how this works is we can render this through a camera. So if we take our player, for example, and let's move him out into the open just a little bit. So let's move him all the way over here and down towards the floor. And what we need to do is attach another camera to the first person controller itself. So right click, and then we need to go down to camera. So then we need to position this camera overhead. Well, we need to position it just right. So we need to drag it up on the Y axis, and then we need to rotate on the X by 90 degrees. So it's kind of facing straight down. Now it's up to you how zoomed in or zoomed out you want your minimap to be. So if you want it more zoomed out, you would raise the camera higher. If you want it more zoomed in, you would lower it. So I'm gonna have it about there. Now over here on the inspector panel, we can see that we have target texture. And quite simple, all we need to do is drag and drop this render texture onto that target texture. So what's happening here is whatever this camera sees is rendered onto this texture. And then we can use that texture to render it onto a game object. So if we go to game object, UI, and go to raw image, and let's have this down the bottom right, for example. So we can anchor it down the bottom right, zero out the position, and let's double click. And if we move into position, so let's use this tool, bring it to about there. Let's right click and rename and call it mini map edge. And I'm going to increase the height and width to 102 by 102. And this will allow us to have a little bit of a border. You'll see now, as I hold Control and press D to duplicate that minimap edge, F2 to rename, and let's just call it minimap. And then couple it onto minimap edge. And then change the height and width back to 100. So now what we need to do is drag and drop this minimap onto the texture. And you can already see our minimap has appeared and it really is as simple as that so if we press play now you can see where we have am i a minimap and as i say it all depends on how world. far you want it zoomed out if you want it zoomed out far it reflects here real time uh one last thing we'll do here to make it nice and simple is on the minimap edge we'll right click uh ui and we'll have let's just have another raw image let's have this as two by two and I'm going to color it just a red color. And this will represent our player on the minimap. So we're always going to be center. So you can see on the minimap, hopefully we have a little Where red dot. Where am I? Minimap, real simple. As we're going to get further into this, we'll probably deal with this minimap more to deal with enemies and all kinds of different things. So this won't be the last of the minimap. Now, there are different ways of doing it in a round shape or heart shape or whatever shape you want, but you would require a shader for that. There's loads of shaders which would be suitable for a round minimap or any other shape. If you head to Google and just have a quick type Unity shader, you'll be able to find one. So the next thing on our list to do is a cutscene. So I'm going to double click on Winston or whatever you have here, just to zoom us in a little bit. But what I think I'd like to do is as we cross the bridge and get to the other side, I'll have a little cutscene which looks at the village. So to do that, what we need to do is game object, camera. And it is fairly simple how to do it. So I'm going to pull the camera to here, up a bit, and look downwards just a little. And the way we're going to do this is via animation. So if we go into our animation folder here, click on animation on the camera, click create. Let's have cut scene 01, save, press record. First frame, we need to set it as it is. So let's retype the rotation on X as 4.24 and the position on the Z because we're going to move it forwards 
is 41.76. So you're just setting that first keyframe. We've dealt with animation before, so I'm not going to go into it too much. But for this animation, what I'd like to do is over the course of, let's say, uh, five seconds, we kind of zoom in and look around. So that's going to be 300th frame. And so by the 300th frame, we want it to be down here and looking about there. Perfect. So now we can stop that animation. Next thing we need to do is create another camera because I'm going to have two separate cameras render one whole cutscene. So again, game object, camera. I'm going to set this camera into the position over here. And all I'm going to do is rotate it 90 degrees and just have it pan around by 90 degrees over about five seconds again. So back to the animation and click on create and let's have it called cutscene 02 and save. Then click record and let's set the first keyframe rotation 90. That's fine. So by the 300th frame, we'll have it rotated to maybe about there. And then let's stop that. So great thing about this is you can have as many cameras as you want. You could even move your camera via a script. But I'm just doing two cameras here to do a little 10 second cutscene. You can take as much time as you need to get it as perfect as you would want it to be. So to get the cutscene active, what we're going to do is set up a trigger when we come across here, which will run the entire cutscene and then revert us back to our player. So to do that, what I need to do is let's go to our scripts folder and right click, create C sharp script, and we'll just call this cut scene one. And I'm actually typing one there. So the script isn't going to be too advanced. It's not going to be too difficult, but there's just a couple of things that we need to reference um, in the script itself. A couple of variables, obviously the cameras. But first things first, I'm actually going to rename the camera. So cut scene cam one, and also cut scene cam two. I'm going to set both of them as inactive. And what I think I'll actually do is I'll right click and remove animator because I don't want it. I want animation. And in that animation, I'm going to drag and drop the uh, cutscene 01. And animations size is going to be one and cutscene one again. And we'll obviously have to um, change it uh, in the legacy settings. So animation, that's it. And that's cutscene two. Size is one and cutscene two. So let's set these in the debug settings to legacy, back to normal, and then click on once. Same with cutscene two, debug, legacy, and once. So just to test this, I'm going to enable cutscene cam one and disable my first person controller just to make sure this camera plays. So yeah, you can see this is how our cutscene is going to pan out. So first person controller back on, cutscene cam one off, and let's get to the script. So it's all going to be done via on trigger enter. So we can get rid of everything within the class so far. And we need to do public game object cam one, then public game object cam two. Then we need to do the player. So public game object the player semicolon. Helps if I spell the word public right there and public game object we need to do the canvas because i want the canvas to disappear while we're doing this cutscene so what we need to do is firstly we need to create the i enumerator so the idea of an i enumerator i'm not quite sure if i've been through it previously but it's a way of actually being able to uh, use a yield function because we need to wait for, in this case, 10 seconds before we can reactivate. So it all needs to be done via I enumerator.
So I enumerator and let's call this cut scene show. Open close bracket, open curly bracket, go down a few lines and close curly bracket. So the only thing we're going to need in void on trigger enter is to start that coroutine. So void on trigger enter, open close bracket, open curly bracket, start co routine and in brackets cut scene show open close bracket close bracket semicolon and close curly bracket so as soon as we enter this object which we'll set later on this tutorial we'll start up cut scene show and what we need to do is set the canvas is inactive so the canvas dot set active false set the player is inactive after the first camera. So cam1.set active is true, semicolon. The player.set active, false. So it's a sequence of events that we're doing here. And because the first camera here is set active, so the cutscene has started, we need to wait for five seconds. So yield, return, new, wait for seconds and in brackets I'm actually going to wait for less than five seconds so let's make the cutscene about nine seconds so 4.5 f so remember we need the f because it's a float it's not a whole number close bracket semicolon so after four and a half seconds we set cam2 set active true and immediately set cam1 as off so set active false semicolon then let's yield return new wait for seconds another 4.5 seconds so you, you could have this as five seconds if you wanted to i'm just uh, going to cut off the camera half a second before it's supposed to end anyway it doesn't make too much of a difference it might always be a good idea to let your scene overrun a little and then cut back like i've done here and then after that, what we need to do is set the player as active. The player dot set active, true, semicolon. Cam two dot set active as false, and then reset the canvas. So the canvas dot set active, true, semicolon. And that should pretty much do it. What we may do is, um, in fact, we should we should be able to leave that as it is. To be honest, I can't I can't see that having too much of a problem. So let's save that there. And now we need to set up that uh, trigger. So we'll do it right there. Easily done via a cube. So game object, three D object cube and I'm going to make this very very thin so 0 0.01 maybe so it's going to act kind of like a, a barrier so we can extend it like so and extend it upwards and then let's turn off mesh renderer tick is trigger and then attach that script we've just written to it uh, which was called uh, I've lost it now got scene one there we go so we attach to the cube right click rename cube just call it uh, cut scene trig. Then we just need to set those variables. So the idea of a cut scene is as simple as just creating a sequence of events like we've done in the script. And canvas onto there. And let's press play. Oops. It helps if I actually do this correct. So uh, where's our player? He is there. Ah, okay. So I've just realized we need to bring up the cutscene trigger. So let's bring it up to about there. Okay, so let's Where give this cutscene a go. I need to find a way out of this wood. So there we go. You could have music in this as well. It's entirely up to you how you want to do, but our 
cutscene is now playing. So the reason that's carried on there is because the player is still within that trigger. So you could simply just destroy the game object as soon as um, it's ended. So we'll do destroy in brackets game object close bracket semicolon and save and let's press play and try that out again so the idea of what's happening here is it's Where just that sequence I? of events that's happening i need so to find a way every time we this cross wood. into a trigger like this it will play this cutscene. so now hopefully what will happen is at the end it will destroy that game object so it won't play again there we go so the cutscene has now ended so guys Two real simple things, common things in games, they're not as hard to create as what you think. Next episode, we're going to look at creating uh, a dungeon for us to play around in with some enemies and all stuff like that, so we'll get more into combat again. So until that next episode, guys, thank you very much for watching.